Okay, we go on to our next our next speaker, who certainly I know has some words of inspiration for us, coming to us from District 49, Rose Kurland. She will be speaking. Well, she has some experience. She is the Speakers Bureau Chair in in District 49, that's Hawaii and the immediate areas right around there. I think she told me she was from, from Maui, but her background, and there's so much to say, but she has been a TEDx speaker. She mm -hmm. is a past, past district director and the Speakers Bureau Chair. So Rose Curlin, let's hear what we're going to hear from those, from someone from Hawaii. Aloha, everyone, from the island of Maui in Hawaii. And you can tell I'm already on the beach, correct? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be here? I am going to take you back to the early years of my 20s, not the 1920s, my 20s. I was a young mother of one recently married a couple of years before and working my way up the corporate ladder because I intended to take the seat of the VP of the corporate company. Of course, everyone thought I was dreaming because I started in the mail room and then worked my way to the front desk, but now if I just put in a little bit more effort and time, I know I can get there because I was determined. Have you ever had those moments where you think, no, honey, we can't go to the beach today because I have to go to work. If I just do one more project, I know the boss will notice me and he'll promote me to the next level. No, not today for the movies, even if mom will watch baby. That day came when I was so elated, so happy. It was if my dreams came true. I put my little wee babe with the dad on an airplane from Maui to the island of Oahu. You see, in Hawaii, we have eight islands. So from the small island of Maui, they were going off to Oahu on Easter weekend. I was elated. I was so happy for them because I got to do what I love the best, my passion. Spend the whole weekend on Easter weekend, Good Friday, and no work till Monday at the office. I set off to the office after I dropped them off at the airport early Friday. No one was working. Started to work away at my paperwork because I knew that if I just did a few more projects for that manager, I could cinch the promotion. After a while, I got very hungry, but determined to do work because that's what's important. I did not take that perfect moment to stop and go out for a meal. Instead, I looked around the office and I thought, there must be something here that I could snack on. Surely with an office of 10 people, there must be something. I looked in the drawers, no snacks. I opened the little office refrigerator and there, there sat a lone peach, plumped and ripe. And then I remembered, it's a long weekend, of course. The entire office was cleaned out. Everyone took home their leftovers. There's no work till Monday. I was so starved. I reached in for that peach. I took a bite. It was so good. I took another bite. And then the phone started ringing. You know, not these cell phones that we have today. Those big, giant, clumpy phones, the ones you press the button for three lines calling in at the same time, and then you press another green button to put them on hold, those phones. And as I reached for the phone to put to my ear, I took another bite. Oh no, the pit had started to launch lodged into my throat the pit <coughs> the phone
phone fell to the ground. I fell to the ground. I rolled around. <coughs> I felt it go deeper and deeper. And then I thought to myself, oh no, this isn't happening to me. I could feel and see the little that I saw of my eyes started to dim into the demise, my fingers turning purple. And I thought this couldn't be happening to me. Why is it happening to me? And as I fought and fought to get the pit out of my throat, I cough, I rolled, I pound things. I tried to reach for the phone again to call 911. I decided to accept my future. And as I accepted my future, I thought about the way I would be found on Monday morning. I was not appropriately dressed. Ladies, you know that when mom says, when you go out, be sure you wear clean. Mm, yes. Nice. Mm, yes. I was not appropriate dress. I had rubber slippers. We wear that all the time when we're not at the office. My shorts were full of baby stains. You know, the burping from the shoulder to, the, to your shorts. It was not a pretty sight. And as I thought about that, I started to laugh about it because I thought, oh my gosh, Someone will find me Monday morning and I'll be stiff as a dead cat. And I thought, ooh, that's not going to smell very well either. And as I thought about it, thought about it, I started to laugh inside of me. I thought, Rose, you miss everything. You miss your whole life because you're waiting for that perfect moment to be the vice president of this company. I laughed and laughed inside of me so hard that pop, out came the pit right into the wall. And I started jumping up and down, oh my gosh, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. Ever since then, I have been a new person about working, believe me, new person about everything. And it has become my life guidance but don't wait for that perfect moment when, every, when you've earned enough money and then we'll take the trip. Because look what happened. You planned the trip in August and they closed Paris. You saved enough money to go to Disneyland and it closed in April. Don't wait. Instead of the perfect moment, instead of waiting for that perfect moment, make every moment perfect. Back to you, Joe.